Hi there guys, this year I'm finally able to go to Armac. I'm planning already this for a few years to get there and this year is finally the year I'm going there. Everything is set up, everything is done and I'm going to Armac. Really looking forward to it. But as you know, the competition there is really fierce with some of the best shooters in the world. So I could use a lot of practice and every little detail that could help me out uh, being competitive at this competition. So, no better excuse to build a custom rifle, as you can see right here, this one. So in this video, we'll go over all the belts and whistles I have installed on this one. Then in the next video, we'll do some velocity tuning. And in the third video, we take it out to the range, put the accuracy at 100 yards on paper and go from there. So, we've got a lot to cover. Let's get started. So, Armac. I think it's one of the biggest airgun competitions in the world for the moment and it looks like a lot of fun. They have different disciplines, like you have for instance the bench, then you have the precision marksman, you have the speed uh, uh, shoot and you have the big bore uh, stuff. So what I will be doing is the bench, I'll be doing the PRS and I'll be doing the speed as well. Now I don't know if I can have two rifles or just one rifle. Uh, at my disposal right there. So I think I will be starting out with the impact. I would also like to bring my uh, Pantera of course in 22 for the PRS, but I will see. So I first start off with the impact so I know I can have an all round uh, gun to use at the bench, at the PRS and at the speed as well. So the competition is fierce and every little piece of detail that can help me putting better accuracy on paper is worth uh, my while. So therefore I've built out this custom rifle as you can see right here. So let's go from the back to the front, address all the parts that I've installed. I also made some um, installation videos, but something went wrong uh, with the audio on those videos. So it's just like a, a video without audio and it's not really interesting to watch. So I'll put some clips from there in between right here to see uh, or to explain a little bit more in detail about some of the parts I've installed on this one. So let's get started. At the back, of course, you want to have as well at the bench as at your PRS stage, a good buttstock. The buttstock that I have been using for quite a while, I've made a video when they just came out, is the Sabre Tactical buttstock. I really like it because it's uh, adjustable in angle at the back. It fits nice in the shoulder. It has these uh, rubberized uh, feet at the back. And what I also really like about it is that you have this slot on the side where you can mount uh, this uh, monopod and you also have a bench rest pod that I still have in my closet somewhere. But my preference is this monopod at the back. So Sabre Tactical, buttstock, really useful as well in all those different stages. Then um, Sabre Tactical just came out with a new AR grip, as you can see right here. Very nice uh, vertical grip. Now, normally at the bench, I'm used to shoot at a normal angled grip, like we all know, but in PRS stages and stuff, the vertical grip is a little bit more um, suitable or the guys that are used to shoot PRS, they really like to use these vertical grips. What is special about this grip? It has a nice bulge to fit into my hand and it also have, you can see it now, but it's on this side of the rifle, a thumb shelf to put your thumb up um, you can also swap it to the other side if you like to have your uh, thumb on the right side of your gun. Depends on your shooting position, of course. So vertical grip, AR grip by Sabre Tactical together with a buttstock. This is already sorted and I'm really happy with it. It feels good, really nice. Then at the back, you can see it right here underneath. I've installed the Crawford and Lipt, um, I don't know how it calls, Ultra Grip uh, Probe Carrier that sits underneath. I also have made a video for this. Um, eliminating the risk of that little uh, adjustment screw coming out, getting my probe loose and therefore losing some accuracy as well. So the Crawford and Lipt uh, Ultra Grip Probe Carrier underneath right there. The probe I'm using is a Yuma Air um, high flow uh, probe that comes together with their dual uh, uh, hole or dual transfer port, just like that, yeah. Um, but the transfer port on here is still the original one by FX. So I have the Yuma port with the original transfer port. Moving along, we get a little bit more to the interesting stuff. Normally, you can see right here now, I have from Air Marksman, they uh, came together with me to supply me with an Air Marksman backbone rail, as you can see right here. In the bronze color, I really like the color. In the beginning, I thought I would go for the black one, but the bronze one really looks beautiful in real life. What it actually does, it replaces the complete backbone or the plate that sits on top of your impact from front to back. The plate 
has a fair amount of thickness, but still uh, Sab uh, Air Marksman came out with their backbone rail, which replaces the complete rail in combination together with the Picatinny rail, extending it way forward, all one piece uh, machined uh, backbone rail is what they call it. Installing it is very easy. It's um, the only thing you have to uh, take in account is take your back plate off and your back plate has different lengths of screws. You have longer ones, you have shorter ones. Uh, because the way they machined it, you need a little bit longer uh, screws for the backbone rail, but they are supplied in the package. So very nice of that from Air Marksman. So what you do is you lift up your plate, locate the longer ones, the shorter ones, match the ones that you get into the package and put them at the same location on uh, the Air Marksman backbone rail. And then you won't have any troubles installing it. What else uh, feature on this backbone rail is that uh, it has a 30 MOA incline in it. So you don't really need adjustable scope mounts, but if you put adjustable scope mounts, I think you can reach to any distance you want. So the 30 MOA, a really nice addition. What else do they have? They have a small retaining screw or uh, retaining ball. So once you cock your impact, as you can see, normally without that retaining ball, your cocking handle will uh, just close forward. What is this good for? In PRS stages, when you transition from one stage, to another one, you need to have your bolt open and when you're moving around with your gun, you don't want your bolt to uh, fall a little bit closed, pushing the next pellet already or slug already into your breech and therefore maybe when you cock it again or put it back, get a double feed, that's not really what you want uh, because you will have two pellets in your breech jamming up your rifle or completely missing your target. So very nice feature. There is a small screw, so if you take that screw out, you can just eliminate it and it will be just like normal. So very nice they thought of that as well. Another item by Air Markman is their new anvil rail. This anvil rail completely replaces your original uh, trigger guard, let's say. Installation is very simple. It's just four screws that we all know from the trigger guard. You can take it out and uh, just put the uh, anvil rail underneath, use the same screws and everything will fit perfectly. And what you will end up with is a very nice white platform at the bottom of this anvil rail with an Arca rail running from front all the way to the back. It has a little bit of texture as well on the bottom uh, for you when you uh, put it onto a sandbag or something or onto a stage or something like this. You will have a little bit more grip on your uh, shooting bag, positioning yourself on those stages. The anvil rail does weigh a little bit more like uh, we would think with other rails and stuff, but this is actually beneficial as well on the bench as on um, the PRS stages to get a good balance into your rifle, to have the balance point exactly in the middle so you can put your gun down and it supports itself in a, a level position. From front to back, at the left side of this anvil rail, you also have numerous amounts of screws with already some threads in it, where you can mount additional weights, Picatinny rails, whatever. I just saw that Air Marksman also came out with their new weights, really looking uh, beautiful in this uh, gold kind of color. So this you can easily adjust whatever you want, left or right, in these holes. There are also some holes at the bottom. They don't have threads, but there is enough room underneath um, to mount uh, various amount of other accessories at the bottom, if you would wish. But I don't see you why you should be doing this. Also, the Arca rail runs all the way till underneath your trigger, which is a nice uh, thing when you put it, uh, when you put a special sandbag or something, you can slide it all the way back. So you get really that balance point perfect uh, if you don't want to use too many weights at the front. Now, this is a heavy setup. You won't be using it to uh, stock uh, the woods all day for uh, shooting some critters and stuff because it's a really firm and heavy stuff. Heavy is good for the bench. Heavy can be good for PRS. We will see how that works out. So really happy with that anvil rail, very solid rail as well. It has a very nice big opening at the bottom, so you can easily reach in to fill your air gun or to fill your impact and remove your filling again as well. This uh, anvil rail is also actually made for the 700 millimeter uh, bottles or the 700 cc bottles, I'm sorry, uh, that Air Marksman sells. I don't have them yet. This is a 580 cc bottle and uh, I will get one in the near future and then it will fill up nicely to the front right there, making everything look even more beautiful. Then with the buttstock, the grip, the rails and the, the backbone rail all installed, you can see I have some digital gauges right here. 
they don't uh, gonna bring me ex extra accuracy, but they're gonna bring me a little bit more confidence to uh, when I get to the tuning part of this rifle. On top of it, you can see I have the Element Optics Nexus. And the reason why I chose this one for the moment is uh, it only has 20 times magnification, but the glass is so clear that probably for a 100 yard bench rest, this is more than good enough. If not, I can still put my Titan on top of it, which has a uh, 25 times magnification. And who knows, maybe I can uh, find a little bit extra cash in my pocket and I will be getting myself a Tios to put on top of it. But I think the Nexus will suit it very well. It's uh, sitting in these uh, spur mounts, quick release, very beautiful mounts, very solid, one piece. I'm using it already for many years and I'm really liking the scope and the rings together, really good. Um, what else is very important and that has to do with accuracy, that is to get a consistent gun. And therefore I have swapped out the regulators on this one as well as the front one, as well as the back one on my FX Impact with the Yuma Air regulators. I know Yuma already for many years and they are very good in what they do with the regulators. So the back regulator, I've made a video, if you want an installation video on this, uh, a very long time ago, many people have benefited from this and the impact platform, especially when it comes to the regulator, is more or less exactly the same as what it was then. So you can very much use that installation video. But actually what you have to do is remove that little plate that sits here under your uh, quick tune system, pull out one pin so you can uh, take out the whole trigger assembly and then you have easy access to the regulator. Screw it out, make sure the o-ring inside uh, down in the hole is good. Um, use your, um, your QR code that comes with your uh, Yuma Air regulator, scan that QR code, look for FX Impact regulator installation and you have a uh, very clearly explanation step by step how to install it, what you have to do, what you have to look for, um, those kind of things. And especially because your Belleville washers do not come installed because they have very different, they have high power, they have low power. This one for instance is a high power one. And therefore you can also find in their website how exactly to stack those uh, Belleville washers for the uh, purpose you want to use it for, of course. So back regulator, Yuma Air, installation went like a breeze, very simple to do and now very stable as well. The FX Impact Mark III has also a front regulator. Now the front regulator, the original one, was working well for me for let's say about over a year, something like this, from when actually the M3 came into my hands. It always have served me well, it was always um, good and it was even having no creep and stuff till about a month ago or something. It started having some creep, it was leaking out of the atmospheric bleeding hole, I was taking it apart putting it back in, still it was uh, creeping a little bit and then the, bleed, the leak was gone. It was a little bit of a hassle. I could have replaced it with a new one from FX, but uh, Yuma Air also makes now their front regulator uh, for the FX Impact. And I must say, I'm really happy with this front regulator. This front regulator, uh, since I've installed it, it came from Yuma, um, set to 153 bar, it was written on the package. Um, so if you have special demands, I'm sure you can send them an email. Um, they have some, I've been there once. They have uh, machines in order to set them up exactly to uh, the pressure that you want. Uh, installation is very simple. Um, you have a silver part and a black part. The silver part and the black part you can unscrew from each other. And then you can have uh, the silver part and on top of it you will see where the adjustments can be made for that regulator. So it's no externally adjustable regulator but it's a lot easier than the original one from FX where you have that small retaining screw with that grub screw that you have to turn which is very sensitive and stuff. So then you just screw in that uh, silver part uh, into the block of your FX impact. It's just a one-on-one -on -one replacement, nothing difficult. Uh, then you screw on that black part and there you go. Your, F your Yuma Air uh, first regulator for the FX impact M3 is installed. Really cool regulator, as I mentioned before, I've installed both of them. Um, it has been sitting for a week, uh, more or less, something like this, and the pressure didn't even move for one bar. Um, showing here on my gauge at the side, it's exactly what Yuma has set it for. Um, the pressure is holding from my bottle perfectly, and my regulator, let's see, should be at 110. It's now 109. In my living room, it's a little bit warmer than here down in my uh, Ergon vault. So it's exactly till one bar, Keeping it, it's not creeping, it's nothing, it charges very well. I'm really happy that I've swapped out to that uh, first stage regulator as well as the back one. So regulator sorted, let's go on to the barrel. 
as you can see the barrel um, it's a 30 caliber with a uh, 30 caliber pellet liner the one that i have inside for the moment is a 1 in 22 i also have a 1 in 24 and i will be getting a 1 in 40 and i'll be testing out the different liners to see um, what is best for the pellets i'm using for the conditions i'm shooting in and as well uh, as you can see um, i still have the carbon fiber harmonic barrel tuner on top of it i know some people are really not a fan of this and they don't believe in this but believe me firsthand i have seen what it can do and um, maybe there is not enough information out there how to make this work but this can really make a difference with accuracy on paper so therefore i have installed it it also has carbon it uh, expands less in heat and cold and stuff so i'm still happy to be using that harmonic barrel tuner inside the barrel i also have the uh, carbon fiber um, barrel sleeve or liner sleeve inside to stiffen up that barrel as well there is still some flex in it as you can see there is no tension i still have a there is no tension barrel i want to say there is still a little bit of a gap here in between the end of the shroud and that uh, barrel clamp as you can see right here i will see i will keep it free floating just like this so uh, we'll see how that goes at the front of course you have two options you can uh, either uh, opt for a uh, muzzle brake from eagle vision for instance there are many other companies out there making it but for me practicing in the backyard and uh, at my private range i still have to take a little bit in count with the neighbors so i have a yuma air uh, avalanche moderator there on the end very nice sectional moderator uh, with some uh, inserts that can uh, disappear, disappear uh, how do you say this uh, divide the air or, or remove the air from behind your pellet or slug getting yourself a little bit better accuracy on paper and it does a great job of moderating the sound as well and then the last thing not to forget underneath i have my bipod it's my accutech bipod it has a very wide stance it has a ability to cant and flip and tilt um, very solid bipod with the arca swiss connection which goes very good together with this um, anvil rail you see right here super cool bipod very fun of it and i'll be using it definitely on the competition as well now i want to tune my rifle to shoot the new zane uh, br 100 30 caliber pellets and uh, these are some uh, 56 grain pellets so i will uh, in the next video i will be tuning this one and i will also be using some eagle vision magazines these magazines by eagle vision are actually very good uh, i like to use them already for a few years now um, in the beginning there was a little bit of a difference i have a video on the eagle vision magazines explaining what's exactly the difference but for instance i have here a pellet one and this one is even in 30 caliber optimized for uh, to shoot slugs so this is the uh, magazines i'll be using as well together with these same pellets so that was a quick rundown of my uh, complete setup with all the parts that i have installed i want to give a massive thanks to uh, Yuma Air and Air Marksman for uh, helping me out getting all the parts together in order to build this rifle. In the next video we'll be velocity tuning it here so I don't uh, have to waste time on the range getting a good stable tune on it. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that video. Later on we'll take it out to the private range put it on paper on 100 yards and see where we're at and which fine tuning we will have to do. So as always I thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and I'll catch you back in the next one. Bye.